Here on the channel, we've talked a lot about traditional lost media before, and how that relates to video games and cartoons, but also some lesser known topics like plush toys, and even just general oddities. However, there's something that I've never talked about before that I'm sure all of you out there have worn at one point or another, and that's... Video game t-shirts. Now I know what you might be thinking to yourself. L Super Sonic Q, there's nothing interesting about video game t-shirts. I can go down to Target or GameStop and choose from a bunch of different designs. And while yes, that's true, you can, have you ever thought about the video game t-shirts that you can't get anymore? Or the ones that seem to vanish over the years or just have cool artwork on them? Let me open with a story. A few years ago, I finally bought No More Heroes on Wii after years of wanting to play it. And in the game, there are many different sets of collectibles to obtain, with clothing items being one of them. You can customize Travis with different pants, jackets, and most importantly, t-shirts. On the surface, there's nothing too interesting about this, other than the designs looking really cool. However, there's one shirt that caught my attention, which makes reference to the fact that it exists as a real-world item. I was confused. Was this some kind of joke to make the game seem more real? The wording seems way too specific to simply be made up though, so I took to the Wayback Machine in an effort to see if these No More Heroes shirts actually existed in real life. Much to my surprise, I found an old web store from Grasshopper Manufacturer, still accessible with listings, that depict the exact same shirts in the game. Unfortunately, since this isn't an active site, you can't buy them from here, which meant I was going to have to search for them. I searched for hours on a plethora of Japanese websites and thrift store websites, hoping to find one of these shirts in the game. And while I did find a Grasshopper Manufacturer logo shirt, I couldn't find the exact ones from the web store, which is what I really wanted. It was like they didn't exist, and that was something I just couldn't believe. How could an article of clothing become lost? This is when the revelation hit me. When I was a kid, I owned a lot of video game t-shirts and wore them proudly around school. But there's one thing that all of these shirts have in common you can't really find them anymore. Try searching for Mario Kart Road Warriors shirt, or White Sonic 06 artwork shirt. Designs and prints get phased out, or as games become less popular. Most of the Sonic shirts I have from the late 2000s contain classic Sonic, because Generations was coming out at that time, and the return of this version of the character was extremely popular in merchandise. This has continued in Sonic merchandising today, with even older iterations of the character being used on modern clothing. My Mario shirts are also relevant to the time they were released, with really outdated renders from Mario Kart DS being used for some of these shirts. Though I do have a couple which feature classic looking artwork, though these were marketed as retro at the time. Nowadays you tend to see 2D art based on Odyssey and Mario Kart 8, with renders being less common in general. But since I grew up with a lot of these late 2000s designs, I remember them quite well. I can recall a couple different releases of the Twilight Princess shirt, with one being brown in color, and the other using slightly different artwork. The old school Sonic shirts also had a fair amount of different color releases, but let's go back even further to the early 2000s. This gets into the scarcity I was talking about before with how shirts can just appear and then vanish almost instantly. Back in the day, GameStop largely used to sell games in their store, so seeing t-shirts there was always a surprise. And in fact, an entire apparel line was available that used images of retro-inspired artwork. The mushrooms are without a doubt the most memorable design from this collection, having appeared on t-shirts as well as a wristband. I actually own the Piranha Plant Bite Me wristband, and to my surprise found a shirt with the same design on it recently. It seems like most of the artwork used in this line was printed on wristbands, t-shirts, belt buckles, and pins. This is actually pretty cool when you get into the more standard artwork of Mario, with simplistic looking designs in nature, and sometimes appearing with slightly altered coloring. Link also made an appearance of a shirt, though the wristbands used the game logo instead of the character. This is just a small part of what was available back then. However, retail only cracks the surface when it comes to limited availability, because if you take t-shirt shopping and go online, then the rabbit hole goes even further. When Sonic Forces came out, I happened to be on the Sega shop and saw they released a new design for the game. I liked it so much that I ended up buying it right away, but if you look now, this design is not available anymore. The Sega shop has discontinued many designs which are difficult to track down now, especially the likes of the 25th anniversary Tails shirt. It's times like this when I'm glad I was able to buy the shirts I wanted at the time, because if you wait too long, you might end up regretting it. Sanshi at one point had this Travis Strikes Again shirt available at a convention only until they put the extras up on their web store. I was too indecisive about ordering it at the time, and then checked back later to see that it was out of stock. Luckily they reprinted it, and now it's back up for sale. 
Generally speaking though, the difference between web stores and retail stores is that retail stores are pretty much accessible to everyone. You can just go in there and buy a video game t-shirt, leaving more of them in circulation. But with online web stores, you have to either know that a certain company has an online shop, or check certain online shops when you know the new games are coming out to get those t-shirts. And if you don't, you're gonna miss out and more people are gonna want them. However, I can't even begin to tell you how many times I walked into JCPenney or Kohl's and saw just an array of Sonic X and Pokemon shirts back in the day that I had very little interest in buying. But I've also never seen them since. Sonic Gear, which is a merchandise archive website, does a great job of illustrating just how many Sonic X shirts were around at the time, and how even a few of the designs back then were elusive to consumers. I own quite a few Sonic X shirts, but unfortunately they're all too small for me to wear now, and if I ever wanted a larger size, it would take quite a bit of searching. Though compared to back then and how video games weren't quite as popular as they are now, I'll say that it's a lot easier finding a wider variety of t-shirts in more sizes and at more locations. Now I will admit, video game t-shirts are not a large part of my wardrobe like they used to be, however it's still fun wearing one on occasion or picking up a cool design that I might see in the store. When I went to Nintendo NY last year, I picked up a couple exclusive shirts to have as souvenirs, even though I haven't worn them yet. My brother also bought me this Nintendo World Championships shirt at Nintendo NY before I was able to go, but this one has gotten some wear since. I found this Star Fox shirt at JCPenney a few years ago too, and the color scheme really jumped out at me. In fact, I have so many video game shirts I completely forgot about until I started looking around for them in my stuff. The Nintendo 64 logo was one of my favorites and I wore it a lot. The aging on it is artificial however. I have a couple Mega Man shirts which offer some nice variety, though the classic one I had to buy at the mall after I got soaked in a rainstorm and the Resident Evil shirt got a compliment from a guy in the hospital after he thought I wore it there as a reference. I also picked up some more Sonic shirts in the early 2010s, with the occasional Zelda one as a nice surprise. You know, I think this one came from a defunct FYE near me, and this one uses artwork from Secret Rings, but hides it with the 06 logo. Video game t-shirts are something I think a lot of people overlook, because they can be hard to display and we wear them and just take them for granted. But there's a lot of history and design in each one, and I think that should be appreciated. But I'm really interested to know which of these shirts you guys might remember from back in the day or even own in your own collections. I think someday I'll end up with that No More Heroes shirt, but for now, I guess it's off to JCPenney to see what they have in stock. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out some of my other game-related Lost Media videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Finn.